Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's Friday Reflections. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's Friday Reflections on this, the 31st of December 2021, the last day of the solar year. And uh, I wish you all a very Happy and blessed New Year, before I even start. Uh, and as well as that, Juma Mubarak. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a special time when, of course, we do look back over the past year and look forward. And I pray, inshallah, that uh, the new year brings better things for everybody. And uh, we're not just continuing on some of the... <laughs> You know, things from this last couple of years, which we're hoping we move on from. But uh, it's all in the hands of Allah, of course. And uh, we pray for the best. Today, I would like to uh, read from this uh, wonderful book, uh, Liberating the Soul, a Guide for Spiritual Growth, Volume 4, by Moulana Sheikh Nazim. Uh, it's a collection of his... Uh, Sobbit of his spiritual talks, uh, published in I believe 2005. Just check that, uh, yeah, 2005. And I'm going to read from number three in the book The Importance of Cleanliness. This is on page 15 of, of the book, and uh, obviously, these are his sobbits that have been written down. We are servants to our Lord, Allah Almighty, and the first condition for the Lord's service is that we are in need of cleanliness. Without being clean, a person is never going to be a servant of the Lord, Allah Almighty, and therefore in every religion it is obligatory to be clean, to wash. The Holy Quran includes every holy books that has been sent by Allah Almighty to his prophets, to his messengers. And there is a verse in the Holy Quran informing that Allah Almighty offered his trust a manna to the heavens and the earth and the mountains. But they asked forgiveness and excused themselves. They said, if you Almighty are ordering us to carry your divine trust, we must carry it. But if you are giving us a choice, then we are asking forgiveness. We will not be able to fulfill your command to carry that trust. Please forgive us. And then Allah Almighty offered it to Adam. And Adam was in that vision, looking and seeing and hearing. And he said, I may be able to carry your trust. Doing like this, lifting the load higher and higher. I can carry it, I can carry it. And when he came up to his shoulders, Allah Almighty said, it is on your shoulders now. You can carry it. You must carry it. That verse, 3372, informs us that from the first prophet, Adam, each prophet knew that, and they informed their nations about it in all the holy books, in the Torah and the Injil, that's the gospel, and in every book that has been sent by Allah to his prophets, that is mentioned because that is an important knowledge which everyone must know about. So, I mean, firstly, let's start from the beginning here. Mulana is saying, we are servants to our Lord, Allah Almighty, and the first condition for our Lord's service is that we are in need of cleanliness. Of course, this has two meanings. One is physical cleanliness. The other is spiritual cleanliness. So having a clean heart, clean intentions, uh, purity of intention inside yourself. Are you a person who's motivated by love or, or by other kinds of motivations? This is what real cleanliness is internal. But... Having physical cleanliness, doing the actual action of wash, washing ourselves, of showering ourselves, uh, if we do it with the right mind, it is also helping us to open to spiritual cleanliness too. 
it is changing our awareness and our consciousness. And then uh, Maulana mentioned about the fact in the Holy Quran that uh, Allah offered his trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, but they asked forgiveness and excused themselves. And then he mentions that this is in all holy books. And, you know, some people that they think that this means that the Quran was offered to like all the nations and it's repeated, but this is not actually what uh, Maulana is saying. He's saying the, the amana, the trust. And if we compare like the essence of the message in the Quran with the essence of the message in the Torah and in the gospels, we will see a commonality of message. It is really one set of teachings that has been expounded in different ways by various prophets throughout history. I mean, such things as, you know, do not uh, do treat people as you want to be treated and don't harm people. Uh, you know, these are teachings you don't kill. You know, these are teachings that are found in all the holy books. Um, it's not just found within the Quran, and this is uh, this is what this is referring to. It's, it's a set of teachings, a set of responsibilities, a set of obligations, and also uh, the enlightenment that comes through these books as well. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Molana continues, the first rite of Allah Almighty, which was loaded on mankind as a trust, was cleanliness, the, the first. Allah Almighty loaded on his servants to be clean. If a man or woman is not clean, he or she is not going to be suitable for worshipping. Yes. He or she may eat, may drink. When eating or drinking, he is going to experience, to taste, a pleasure and he is going to be pleased with eating and drinking. But afterwards, after you eat, you must go to that small room. Even two big people, even people who are big, <laughs> to be seen. Grand Sheikh was saying that there was, in their homeland amongst his relatives in Dagestan, a good elderly person. He was joking with people like Nasruddin Hoja, a comedian sort of a person. Once he was sitting in a coffee shop and there was a young man looking like this, covering his eye also, pointing his feet towards the old man. That young fellow was too proud one. And he put his foot like this, it meant that no one could speak to him. And the old man said, oh son, I'm wondering, I would like to ask one question to you. He said, what is the question? You never go to the toilet? The young man put his foot down and also, and he was clever in understanding. He said, if you go to the toilet, for well, what is that pride? Is that suitable? A proud person must not go there. Why are you going? And the young man said, quickly said, a stuff for Allah. Yes, Allah Almighty is giving lessons to mankind. He's able to create mankind without going there. The people of paradise are eating, drinking, tasting. No need to go to the toilet. But here, Allah Almighty is making them to do it in order not to be proud. This is a point, you know, people have a tendency, human beings have a tendency to become proud, even arrogant. But you know, even the Firun, the Pharaoh, in the time of Moses, he thought he was God. He actually was so deluded, he thought that he was God. Such was his ego, pride, and arrogance. But Pharaoh needed to go to the toilet, just like this young man, who Sheikh Abdullah of Faisal Dagestani was referencing. And the thing is, if we go to the toilet, how can you be proud of going to the toilet? <laughs> Having said that, my wife was showing me the one day that you can actually buy golden toilets. I mean, they cost an absolute fortune. And I don't know why one would want one in the house. 
even if I was a billionaire, I can't imagine that I'd actually want a golden toilet. So I'd want a practical toilet that actually is clean and works. But um, yeah, you can actually get golden toilets. So there probably are people out there who are proud of sitting on the, the, the throne. But, you know, in English slang, we call a toilet a throne. But this is the throne of the ego. It's uh, what a silly throne. If anyone thinks about that, he's never going to be proud. And pride is the reason which made Satan to be thrown out of paradise. Therefore, Allah Almighty wants to protect his servants from pride, the bad characteristic of mankind, and anyone who goes there, no right for him to be proud. And when this eating and drinking and marriage or sexual relations occur with people, they are the main pleasures of this life. People are running after these three things and they are on the same level with animals. Also on that level, because animals do all of these things. So if a person is just following these aspects of life and not, um, not even aspiring intellectually, you know, to rise above that, let alone spiritually, then at that time, we are no better than animals. And Moana says that then Allah Almighty is ordering people, yes, you may eat, you may drink, but as a punishment, you must go there to that dirty place, i.e. the toilet. And when you go there, you are useless for your Lord's worship, for your Lord's servanthood. And he is ordering, go and wash your hands, your feet, your face, so that you'll be suitable for my service, for my worship. And more than the pleasure of eating and drinking, there is pleasure with the sexual connection. Then Allah Almighty is saying, when a man or woman tastes that, he or she is useless. Quickly go and clean yourself, ordering complete cleanliness. That order was given from the first man up to the end by Allah Almighty. It is one of the trusts that Allah Almighty offered to the mountains to the heavens and the earth, but they were not able to carry it, the first order, that is tahara min al-janaba, cleanliness. Allah Almighty gets most angry with the one who walks on the earth without cleaning himself or herself. And he orders everything that person steps on to curse them. Everything that he steps on around or under his feet curses him or her. He does not take a bath and clean himself. See, within Islam, cleanliness is very highly prized. And some people today, they look at Muslims and are surprised by this. Although having said that, even like within modern societies, it is normally to take a shower daily, actually. It's become normal to take a shower daily. Some people in hot countries may even shower twice a day. Cleanliness is, goes beyond Islam. And yet, when Muslims wash themselves before they pray, some people ask, why do you do this? We don't have to do that in the church. But I think some people forget, and going back to what Molana was referring to here, that this was something that is ordered in all of the holy books. I have read in the Torah, in the Old Testament of the Bible, it's possibly the Leviticus, the book, where it mentions about washing of hands. Washing of hands. It's there. Not only that, but the Jewish priests, when they used to serve in the temple, they had ritual baths. And they used to wash themselves completely. And this is probably connected to the baptism tradition that was around in the time of Jesus, peace be upon him. And Jesus himself was uh, baptized by Nabi Yahya, or as he's known in English, John the Baptist, peace be upon them both. And baptism being completely submerging the person under the water with some prayer and then lifting them out of the water. And of course, this is physical cleanliness, symbolizing also 
a, a path to spiritual cleanliness. And if you look within Hindu traditions, there are many temples in India that have big baths and, you know, even like people jump into the river Ganges. I mean, it's not such a good idea these days because the river Ganges is no longer clean. It's highly polluted. But I guess at one time when the water was pure, it would have made sense for people to jump in the river Ganges and they would have got clean. But this is actually a universal thing around the world that you are finding all different religions about cleanliness, whether people are practicing it today or not. And even when I was visiting synagogues, uh, I've noticed that before they eat, they do what they call a ritual washing of pans. And they says, it's all right, you don't have to do it because you're not Jewish. And I says, well, actually, within Islam, we are used to washing hands and faces and heads and feet. <laughs> Bismillah. Allah Almighty made water for every nation. Oh, sorry, I haven't read this paragraph. In all the Sharias, the rules of every religion, that is the first command from the prophets to their nations. You can't find any prophet not ordering it, i.e. cleanliness, for their nation. If anyone says so, he is a liar. Therefore, it is a first step to prepare yourself to be a servant to your Lord, Allah Almighty. You must be clean, physically clean and spiritually clean. Allah Almighty made water for every nation for cleanliness. And he also offered to the nation of Moses to use clean water for cleaning, but they refused. They said that we would not accept cleaning without water. With, without water, we do not accept to make tayamum on clean earth. And Allah Almighty granted that to the nation of Muhammad Sallam, and we may use it where we can't find water or where we can find it, but it is of no use. We may do that tayamum. We may make ourselves clean with clean earth. So this is a way that people, um, especially living in desert countries where there isn't much water, they actually rub sand, very clean sand upon themselves. And you can actually get some measure of cleanliness through this. No one would suggest it is as good as washing with water, but if you've got no other alternative, it is, it is a good temporary solution. And Mulana says that is a grant from Allah Almighty to ourselves, to the nation of the Prophet, that the beloved servant of Allah Almighty, Sayyidina Muhammad. Therefore, you may use it. If you do not take a bath quickly, you may use that cleaning to make yourself clean up to the morning. Don't sleep dirty. You may do it on the floor. The floor always has dust. It is enough also, or on clay. Yes, you may do it. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim strikes, the Mulana strikes his hands on the dusty surface and wipes his face with them. I'm asking for cleanliness. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim strikes his hands again and wipes his arms and, uh, hands and arms and is finished. That person is clean. And I heard my grand sheikh say, if a, per, if a prophet broke his wudu ablution before coming to water again to make wudu, he will start using that tayamun so that he did not walk on the earth without cleaning. You may use it, and some people are asking me for if for wazifas, for tariqa orders, they are without wudu, they may do tayamam. And I am saying, why are you staying without wudu? If no wudu, make tayamam quickly, saying, I intend to be clean. According to your order, I am using that. Finished. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, and that is finished. You may be in the winter time and you can't find anything dry to make tayyamam on. Or you can't open anything of your clothes for wudu. Then you may do it, but only by approaching near to snow or mud. Don't touch it only like this, doing that, that it is enough. But Molana focuses on it, saying, don't be, don't walk dirty. That is dangerous. If death catches a person and he's dirty, no safety for him from punishment in the grave and a cursed one. And we are asking forgiveness from Allah Almighty and we are asking to be his servants. Therefore, we are the means of cleanliness every time. 
even nighttime, if you are able, you must try to get into your bed clean. If a person gets into his bed clean and sleeps, his soul goes under the divine throne, making such dirt prostrating until he awakes. But if not sleeping clean, his soul is imprisoned in a dark place. Therefore, many people are coming and complaining to me that they are dreaming terrible dreams, something disturbing them in their dreams. So I think the point here is, Molana is saying, if you're having bad dreams, try making uh, wusu or wudu before you go to bed. He said that is the reason, the solution for that is to sleep clean, to sleep clean and your body also is going to be fresh always and rested. But in that time, people are afraid to touch water. They are not using water for tahara cleanliness, not using it for washing their hands or washing their faces. They are afraid. And water is the main source of life. As much as you can always be in touch with water, you will get to be renewed and fresh physically always. Yes, and we are in need of that. Uh, it's, it's interesting. I was uh, in a shop, a bookshop the other day, and I just got chatting to this lady because it's quite crowded. So I don't know how we start again in conversation, but I was chatting to a lady in there. And we, this whole thing about COVID, I think that was what it was. She was looking at masks and she asked me, she said, do you think I will need that for next year? It was a Christmas mask for, you know, we've been asked to wear masks because of COVID. And she didn't buy it in yet. She says, hopefully we won't need that next year. And I said, inshallah. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that she mentioned, you know, because I mentioned something, I says, well, at least, oh, I says, I've never really had too much faith in the masks because, you know, the virus can still pass through these masks. And she agreed with me. And I said, but obviously, I mean, I said, health comes from Allah. Our health always comes from Allah. And, you know, whatever we do, we should always remember them. But I said, at the same time, I always take precautions and, you know, do sensible things because we're supposed to do that as well. It's, it's not just you put all trust in Allah and don't do what you should be doing. And I said, so, you know, obviously I wash hands and use the alcohol gels and, uh, you know, to keep my hands clean. It would be recommended, especially during COVID. Um, and, you know, if I'm asked to wear a mask, I'll wear a mask. But, you know, I know ultimately my safety is with Allah. And, you know, she come back and she said, you know, it's strange that you wouldn't think people would need COVID in order to wash their hands. And it's something that struck my mind as well at some point when I started. One of the few things I've appreciated about this time during COVID is the fact that there's plenty of facility now around to wash and to, you know, also clean your hands with sterilizing gel. And more people seem to be washing their hands and doing that than previously. But did it really need a virus to make us do that? I've always been washing my hands ever since I was a kid. This is how I was raised. And it's, it's just it's striking that, you know, people needed a pandemic to make them realize the importance of washing their hands. Anyway, Morlana continues and says, therefore, Sharia says, you are free of the obligation of wudu until you are in need to pray. When you want to pray, you must do wudu. But Tarika says, you must not walk around without wudu because it means that a person, if he is clean always, is in charge of his servanthood, always in his Lord's service. He is never with his ego, no, always clean, always walking on the earth for his Lord's servanthood. This is a key point. You see, on, on a lot of things, uh, Sharia will actually be easier than the guidelines in Tariqa. 
because Sharia is a general rule that everybody is expected to follow. So Sharia actually says that we should, we only need wudu when we pray. But Tariqah, the Sufi orders, the Sufi ways, teach that we should strive to be in wudu in a state of cleanliness at all times. And we shouldn't be walking around this place and that place without being clean. And there is a wisdom in that, as Moulana says here, because when a person does that, they are consciously doing that to be in their Lord's service. So consciously, they're developing their taqwa, that they are serving Allah, wherever they are, whatever they're doing. They're not just doing that when they enter a mosque or you know, get a prayer mat out in order to pray. Molana continues, the whole spiritual structure of mankind is built on cleanliness and it is impossible for a person to improve towards his heavenly station without reaching complete cleanliness physically and spiritually. And now we are in, we, well, we're not actually in the month of Ramadan, but obviously when this was written, we, we were. And obviously people fast in Ramadan. And Molana continues and says, fasting helps to make people spiritually clean. And that is a beginning. Fasting is a beginning for cleanliness spiritually. And at the first step, you are an ordinary standard of fasting. You are trying to make yourself free from your ego's commands and control, because as long as you are under the control of your ego, that makes you dirty. Therefore, at the first level of fasting, we're trying to force our ego so that we may take control from its hands into our own hands, and therefore we are not eating and drinking and no sexual contact during the daytime. This is the first step. To stop halal, what is permissible for every day, except during Ramadan. Eating and drinking and being with your wife, it is halal, permitted. But in Ramadan, that permitted halal thing is haram, forbidden during the daytime. That we can do, but we are asking for more cleanliness. For more cleanliness, the second step is to try to be clean from sins. You must guard your eyes. You must guard your tongue. You must guard your ears. You must guard your hands and you must guard your feet. All parts of your body that can do some wrong actions, you must try to prevent them. As I am keeping myself from eating and drinking, oh my tongue, you must be careful. Don't say anything that is prohibited. That is another second step to make ourselves clean from every prohibited action, from sins that make us physically and spiritually lighter. We can move towards the heavens, but it is still not enough. You know, there is a hadith that I was told uh, many, many years ago, uh, not long after I embraced Islam. And I've always liked this hadith because it's so simple, but the wisdom in it is very powerful. And the impact, if you follow it, is very powerful. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, if you, can, if you control this and your private place, then you won't have you'll be safe. But if you can't control this and, and that, then you'll, you'll be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and it's all troubles come from these two things. And this is what Molana is saying here, straight from the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad That is another second step to make ourselves clean from every prohibited action, from sins that make us physically and spiritually lighter we may move towards the heavens, but that is still not enough. There is a third step for hearts. Your heart, you must look after it. And as fasting for hearts, Allah Almighty says, 
your heart belongs to me. Amongst the children of Adam, every part of his body belongs to himself but one. Only one belongs to me, i.e. to Allah. Your heart belongs to me, not to anyone else. He says, therefore, I am asking that one to be clean, absolutely clean. How can it be clean? Everything except Allah Almighty must be put out of your heart. Every time you are by yourself, you may look at yourself. If you are with your Lord or with whom you are now, any time you look at your heart and you see yourself with your Lord, Allah Almighty, you are a fortunate person that your heart belongs only to your Lord. And then a divine light will come and enter into your heart and you will reach such a pleasure that if that pleasure were divided among all the sad people on earth, they would jump and dance with pleasure. When your heart is only for your Lord, Allah Almighty, he fills your heart with pleasure, with lights, divine lights, divine pleasures, which no one can imagine. And they are increasing at every moment. Therefore, Grand Sheikh, may Allah be pleased with him, was saying, O Nazim Effendi, the moment when a wali, a beloved one, is going to be in his Lord's divine presence, if a person says to him, we may give you the whole world and its treasures and its pleasures also, he is never going to agree to give him that for a second. No. Saying, take all of them everything, every pleasure of this world that is given to people to have in its place that second with my Lord Almighty. It is endless for us. And your Lord Allah Almighty is asking you to come to his divine presence clean. Allah Almighty likes clean people. You who be, you, you, what is Mubalakh? Too much, exceedingly, extra. Yes, extra clean, exceedingly clean. Allah Almighty is asking. And we are trying, we, we must try. It is not easy, but sometimes a drop of water drops on a rock and makes a hole. Therefore, we are not cutting off our hope. Day by day, it is going to be to effect, inshallah, our hearts. And day by day, we should receive some cleaning. And we hope to reach his divine presence clean. Wamin Allah atawfiq. We are thanking Allah Almighty and saying, Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah astaghfirullah. That makes us clean. Astaghfirullah. To make us clean. And Alhamdulillah makes us clean. Every holy word makes us clean. So you see, this is all about developing our consciousness and into God consciousness so that we are aware in all of our actions every day. And it is easier, much, much easier when we are clean and when we are aware of cleanliness and our state of cleanliness at any given time, the more aware we are of that. Even in the moments when we are dirty, we're aware of it. We're not just ignoring it. And as soon as we can, we go and wash and clean ourselves. This is good. This develops that awareness. And the more we become aware of that, the more we also become aware of our cleanliness from sins, from uh, evil thoughts, evil inclinations, and bad intentions, and other things that can creep into our hearts. So it's, it's a process, and it's, it's there for, for a reason. And this is why we find, uh, similar to what we do with uh, ritual ablutions, is also found within the Bible, within we see it in the Gospels, with baptism, and within other religions. 
because ultimately all of these teachings are streams that come from the same source and Allah sent the same guidance to everyone in our human family because it is good advice good advice for us that we may prosper both in this life and in the hereafter on that note I will close this today. I wish you all a very happy new year. I know some people in other parts of the world are already in 2022. Uh, here it is nine o'clock in the UK. So we still have three hours before we enter into 2022. But uh, and it's going to be a bit longer still for our friends in the Americas. But wherever you are in the world, I wish you a very happy and blessed new year. May it bring better things, inshallah, and spiritual openings for people, healing for people, and also, uh, you know, prosperity and well being for everybody in our human family. May Allah bless us all. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammadin wa baraka salim wa al Fatiha. Awzu bila min shaitan al Rajim, bismillah khayyar rahman al Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يخنا ودو يخنا استعين دين السرات المستقيم سرات الذين رمت عليهم خير مطلوب عليهم مطلوب and uh, if you enjoyed these uh, videos and lives uh, please if you haven't already and you're benefiting from them don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram Facebook and YouTube channels, uh, and also my website at paulsarmstrong.com. And wherever you are in the world, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of God be with you all.